My name is Phyllis Baker, and I am um, the mother of my son, Anthony Church, that was a victim of violent crime at a village pantry October 3rd, 2010. It's been almost four years, and the nightmare of this is not over yet. Uh, we are still seeking medical help, which has not been adequate. Um, I feel all of this could have been prevented. It should have never happened to him. It should have never happened. Any, after a first person had been hurt, it should have never been allowed to happen again. Right, that's right. And as far as I'm concerned, there's still nothing happening. And everything is just being dismissed and people passing the buck from one person to the next. And I don't understand why something hasn't been done. Anthony was working an overnight shift alone by himself. And about one o'clock in the morning, he had just finished cleaning the restroom. So he wasn't even back behind the register. Uh, he came out of the restroom, was accosted by someone wearing a hooded shirt, um, almost covering his eyes, not much to see, and Anthony made eye contact, and the guy was in a position where Tony knew that he was probably in trouble because he had worked in a liquor store previous for 12 years. Well, he turned to run, and from what I understand, which I would never be able to look at that video, his head was slammed up against a wall, fallen on the floor, and beat after he was down. And um, he doesn't remember hardly any of the incident uh -huh. or anything like that. And what the robber got was cigarettes, lottery tickets, and he took a bas uh, bag of donuts before he left. Anthony suffered a concussion, a nasal bone fracture, a broken jaw, and the previous morning had a seizure, and um, was admitted to the hospital, let go, and um, trying to recover from his injuries. Two months later, he developed a blood clot on his leg, and it had traveled to his lungs, both sides of his lungs, calling pulmonary embolism. So Anthony is now on seizure medication the rest of his life, blood thinners, and being treated for post-traumatic syndrome because he laid in the floor and it took three people to finally call for help. One woman came in, saw him laying there, got herself something to drink and left, called no one. Wow. Another man came in and since Anthony was in the middle of the floor, he just looked around and saw no one, so he left. The third person was a taxi cab driver and finally called for help. But it took three people. These employees are laying on the floor at the mercy, their life in danger, waiting on a customer to come in and call for help. Right. Which... How do people get by running a business relying on customers to help run their business when people are laying there in a matter of minutes their life could be gone right I just I don't understand it and if the customers are the ones that are making the calls and rescuing these people then they would be laying there dead on the floor until somebody finds them and I would yeah. I would like to thank the taxi cab driver I've mm -hmm. never known who he is uh, that finally called for help right? because it still could have been much worse right. if he had not 
been a good citizen and call for help. Anthony is still being treated. It, we have workman's comp caught, cut him off after only eight weeks of payment, saying that he was able to go back to work. When he still complained, he didn't feel good. They dismissed it. Uh, the workman's comp nurse said she never heard of anyone getting a blood clot from being immobile because he was trying to recuperate from his injuries, would not talk to me again, would, um, in fact, that's the last thing she said to me. So who's been covering it since then, all his medical well, expenses? Well, we had to uh, go to St. Vincent's. He was enrolled in um, um, a sliding scale fee there so we could get treatment for the blood clots. Uh, there wasn't a lot of testing that could be done without the financial things because he was on the sliding scale fee. He went through that for about a year and um, finally he got approved for Medicare, Medicaid. And so they have passed the buck onto the state to take care of these people where he should be having the best medical care, right. being able to see one doctor instead of doctor after doctor and going through. It has been very depressing for him to mm -hmm. go to each doctor and relive and repeat the story time and time again. He's not been able to work. He has short-term memory. Uh, it hurts him if he stands on his feet too long. It hurts if he sets too long. Um, it, he hasn't been out of the house and just about six months ago they they just started treating him for post-traumatic syndrome mm -hmm. which should have been pretty much not needing a Columbo for the case that anyone that's almost murdered and laying on the floor would have some kind of trauma right. over right. that. Right. Uh, he still has problems sleeping. Uh, if that's part of the post-traumatic syndrome, if it's part of medication that he's on. So it's going to be hard for him to find a job not knowing that he's getting adequate rest to be able to complete duties. And with his short-term memory, at his uh, last job previous to Village Pantry, he would train managers at the store. He had all the codes memorized, everything, never had to look nothing up. He got up one morning in his bedroom and noticed that his blinds looked awful clean. And he had cleaned them the day before and not even remembered. How do you feel about the law situation? The laws aren't right. Allowing these businesses to get away with it. They know how many police calls have been at these places. Uh, a person has a right to know when they take a job if they're in a high-risk store. Uh, if they would just have all the police reports like I did on this village pantry. Uh, at that time, there had been 33 armed and strong-armed robberies, and they were still leaving people in there. Unprotected so, in unprotected any way. Unprotected and alone by their self. Right. So to me, they are an accessory to murder, telling them that it is okay to go in and rob this store. They are, they're just opening up the store and got a warm body and they're working and they don't really care All because right. they are paying such a low wage that um, they don't think of the consequences of what the victim and their families are going through. Right and people right. need jobs in this day and age and in my son's case instead of just sitting home doing nothing he took something close to home and um, be able to uh, make a living and thought it would be safe mm -hmm. and I don't think an employee 
even stops to think to do police reports on these places because All right. the All owners right. certainly aren't telling them. Right. It's the owner's responsibility to make sure that the environment is safe for the employees. Absolutely. And it's not. And it's, it's not. It's not. Right. There's, it, there's not even, a, to me, a little bit of safety there. How do you know when an employee's down? You don't, and you don't care. Right. It's right. the way that I look at it. And right. until somebody ever experiences what someone's been through, I don't know what it's going to take for them to understand that, like I said, it's not the 1950s anymore. Do something. There's plenty that can be done, and it's not being done.